is Rumia Ambrose Burbank, and my company is Virtual Maintenance Solutions, or we go by VMS. Uh, my corporation is about 13 years old and we do maintenance repair and operations for companies. So what that means is companies outsource their um, facilities, equipment, and services uh, in addition to the maintenance and repair of equipment that they have on site. So we do this for corporations across the U.S. Um, typically small to large corporations, uh, they outsource the purchasing. Uh, the warehousing, materials management, so our companies sit on our tools, uh, our people are in their facilities receiving materials in, putting away materials, and then we have a central staff that does the buying, uh, and then we also have buyers on site that uh, actually do expediting for our clients. Uh, our model is not a traditional model in the respect that uh, a lot of our competition are, are distributors. We consider ourselves an integrator, and the difference is an uh, integrator uh, not only buys the material, but we kind of oversee the entire process of the supply chain uh, for indirect material. And our value proposition is that um, we don't charge markup like a traditional distributor. Everything we do is tied to savings. Uh, we typically go in and guarantee savings for our customers anywhere from 10% to 25%, uh, sometimes upwards of 30%, and we look at the areas of managing the inventory better. So we typically will come in and help to reduce uh, inventory uh, and get smart inventory practices in place. And we also, uh, of course, piece price, because our, our buy, uh, buying uh, power is pretty significant. We do about $750 million in uh, material purchases. And uh, so we're able to not only give them discounts in pricing, but through other things like material rationalization and uh, inventory reduction. So we have a huge value proposition we typically go on with our customers. We have about 168 employees across the U.S., in Mexico and Canada, and we have 15 facilities throughout the U.S. where we're doing this for our customers. Uh, some of our clients would be ExxonMobil, uh, GM, smaller manufacturing uh, facilities. We deal with banks, Bank of America. Uh, so we pretty much touch every industry from uh, energy and gas to utilities uh, to uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, so that's a little bit about our corporation. Uh, I am the owner, uh, only owner of the company and uh, my company actually started as a joint venture with uh, EDS. So we started on the IT side and we over the years morphed to indirect materials. Uh, about three facts that I would give to or three um, uh, I don't know if you want to call them maybe my, my words of wisdom on, on three uh, uh, three things to advise businesses that are or companies that are looking to go into business or people who are looking to go into businesses. I actually want to focus mine on women owned businesses because um, I think uh, for us it's sometimes a little bit more challenging uh, in the in the workforce trying to start a business and trying to grow a business. So if I have to give three words of wisdom. Uh, they would be around, uh, uh, sometimes uh, I think we as people tend to let our pride get in the way. So one of my words of wisdom would be, put your pride aside. Um, I've gone into meetings where they thought I was the secretary, and I was okay with that. I let my team take the lead on it and close the deal. And at the end of the day, when it came around to signing the contract, I had to do that. But sometimes I think uh, I've learned it's best to, um, to sometimes not to be on the front forefront and I'm okay with taking a back seat as long as at the end of the day the deal gets done. So I think number one would be uh, set aside your pride. Uh, number two would be be persistent. Um, uh, I think sometimes uh, as women we get put into a category. Um, either we um, uh, are very smart um, but maybe not as smart as our male counter counterpart or we've gotten to where we are because of you know our looks or who we know um, but I think at the end of the day once if, if you are passionate about what you do and you have a good product or service uh, that'll come out at some point so you'll get past the um, you'll get past the uh, boxes and the, 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 the constraints that people put around us but you got to be persistent and you got to stay in people's face and you got to continue to push and I think number three would be um, for me that's been big is I don't produce anything 
Um, I don't uh, manufacture product. So everything I do is centered around my people. And so um, because of that, my people are gold. And so I uh, make sure that my work environment is one where people love to come in. Um, I created a very flexible environment, um, especially for my employees that have children. Um, everybody is equipped to work from home. Um, and they have the ability to, to, to kind of be flexible with their schedules. In certain instances you can't do that, but I think there's always things that you can do to make sure that your people come first. And I'll tell you one thing, if your, your workforce is happy, your customer is happy, and everything else down that line um, falls into place. I don't need anybody sitting at their desk worrying about if their kid is going to be picked up on time. I'd rather them go take care of that and then come back and they can be more productive. So the last but not least would be to make sure that you take care of your people, you value your people, and you put them first.